Praise the Lord. I'm finally on the Covenant Highway of Life. Congratulations. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord this first day of the week of spiritual emphasis and the first Wednesday in the month of August? Rise up with joy and gladness. The Bible says, enter his gate with thanksgiving. Lift your voice and your hands to heaven and begin to appreciate this king of glory. For this first day of the week of spiritual emphasis, begin to appreciate him. For grace to wait upon him. For bringing for the privilege to appear in Zion. Somebody, are you appreciative? Give him the glory that belongs to him. Magnify the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you. Somebody appreciate him for what he said to do today. Appreciate him. Give him all the praise. Give him all the glory. Magnify the name of the Lord. Are you thankful? Bless the name of the Lord. Bless him for the diverse healing that will happen today. Bless him. Bless him. Give him all the glory. Father, we give you all the praise. We magnify you for who you are. We thank you for what you are said to do today. Is somebody, I don't know what you are waiting, expecting God to do. Can you begin to thank him because that is already done? Can you begin to thank him because any kind of sickness, bloodline diseases are already terminated. Long age diseases are already terminated. Somebody appreciate him. Appreciate him for what he's said to do today. Give him all the glory. Give him all the praise. Somebody magnify the name of the Lord. Magnify him with a hand lifted up and a hand wave offering. Appreciate the king of glory. Give him all the praise. In Jesus mighty name we have given thanks. No doubt God of this commission has blessed us with a, a lot of testimony. If you have testimony, please make your way to the foyer. There will be a minister to document your, your testimony. And if you are perhaps following us online, please send your testimony via the number and email displayed on the, on the screen and as you do that I see God multiplying your testimony in Jesus name put your hands together as we welcome the choir to so take us further today hallelujah somebody worship the Lord wave your hands and say thank you Jesus thank you, you're Jesus. worthy of my praise thank you Lord you were the Lord You are worthy of my praise. Oh, you are worthy of my praise. Sing, Jesus. Jesus. Lord, you are Let's be the 
the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. Sing, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. up tonight to give God quality thanks. Where we do, we say, Father, thank you for the unprecedented and ingathering of multitude into our services last Sunday and for settling every unsettled area of our lives by your word. Can I hear a resounding amen to that? John 6 verse 44, no man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. You are set to give God thanks online, on site, rise up on your feet. And begin to thank God from the depth of your heart. Father, we thank you for the unprecedented and in gathering of multitude into our services last Sunday. And for settling every unsettled area in the life of everyone, O oh Lord, by your word. We have come like that one leper to say thank you. We have come to give you glory. We thank you for settling every unsettled issues in the life of your people. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Thank you for the unprecedented multitude you brought by yourself into the first and the second service. We are not taking it for granted. That's why we are returned tonight like that one leper to say thank you, Lord. We have come to give you praise. We have come to give you glory. We have come to give you honor. You can thank him in the language of the spirit. You can thank him in your understanding. Oh, Lord, we say thank you. Lord, we give you praise. We give you all the glory. 
thank you for the unprecedented multitude. The ingathering you gather into our first service and second service last Sunday. We thank you for settling every unsettled issue in the life of your people. Take all the praise, take all the glory. Is heaven still hearing your voice? Are you being intentional tonight? Let God hear your voice of thanksgiving online, on site. Le kato kashanta ya. Give God all the praise, give God all the glory. Lato shataka ya badoko sunte ye kashanta ya baleke sente ye. Almighty God, we say thank you. We return tonight like that one leper will say thank you. Because it is only you that can draw the multitude. That's why we have come tonight to say take all the praise. Lord, we thank you for the ingathering of our unprecedented multitude into the first and the second service and for settling every unsettled issue in the life of your people. By your word, we have come to say thank you tonight. We have come to give you praise. We have come to give you glory. We have come to give you honor. We give you praise. We give you glory. Take all the praise. Take all the glory. Lift up your hands to heaven and begin to appreciate him. Give him all the glory. Give him all the honor. Celebrate this God. He is a faithful God. He is the Alpha, the Omega. Oh, we thank you. He's doing their marvelous in our midst. We bless your name, O oh Lord. We thank you for settling every unsettled issue. We say thank you. Take all the praise and all the glory. Blessed be your name. For in Jesus' glorious name we are praying. Your glorious hands together by Jesus and be seated in the presence of God. Praise the Lord. I'm finally on the covenant highways of life. Short while again we'll be standing up to pray. This time we'll be saying, Father, thank you for directing all our new converts and new members to this church at their city of refuge, thereby abiding here for life. In the book of 2 Samuel 7, 10, the Bible said, Moreover, I appoint a place for my people Israel, and we plant them, that they may dwell in place of their own and move no more. Neither shall the children of the wickedness afflict them any more as before time. Please, everyone, I want you to stand up up your feet and begin to decree in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, thank you for directing all our new converts and new members to this church as their city of refuge. They are abiding here for life. In the mighty name of Jesus, ancient of this, we worship you for all this, oh God, for the direction. Oh Lord, we say thank you, Jesus, for directing all our new converts and new members to this church as their city of refuge in the name of Jesus and abiding here feeding with the word of the Lord for life father we say thank you Jesus for all this oh God a shed of those who are here today to return all the glory to your holy name for the direction oh God you grant unto all our new convert oh God and all new members to this church winners chapel Birmingham in the name of Jesus planted them to be their city of refuge they are abiding here for life in the mighty name of Jesus oh God all we just want to say is thank Thank you, Jesus, oh God, because you are the Lord that never fail, oh God. Thank you for proving yourself, oh God, for directing, oh God, all our new convert, oh God, and new members, oh God, to this church, oh God. Grant them, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, and even to be their city of refuge and abide here for the life. In the name of Jesus, ancient of them, we say thank you, oh God. All we just want to say is say thank you, Jesus, oh God. Because your word says it's not everything we should give thanks. And for this you've done for us. That's why we are giving thanks to your holy name. Because you've even directed all our new converts and new members to this church. Winners Chapel Birmingham, oh God. To be their city of refuge. And thereby they are abiding here for life. Father, we say thank you. Maribra Zikete Sisa. Father, we worship your holy name. Peru Sekete. Yeshu Shaba. Wabrateko. Teko Yesekete. Father, Lord Jesus, we worship you, O oh God. We say thank you, O oh God. We say thank you, O oh God. We say thank you for directing all our new converts and new members to this church to be their city of refuge. Thereby, they are all abiding here for life. In the name of Jesus, O oh God. 
Or we just want to say is thank you. We worship you. We reference your majesty because you are the doers. That's why we are referencing your holy name because we know no one can come unto you except thee, the Father in heaven. You draw them to you. Father, we say thank you for the drawing. We say thank you, O oh God, because you are the Lord for proving yourself strong, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, people of God, be this. Let's begin to even pray in the realm of our spirit. Welcome in the Holy Ghost. Acknowledge him for whom he is. Acknowledge him in the realm of our spirit. In the name of Jesus, because the Bible commands us, he says, ye that give thanks, thanks in spirit as dwell it well. Mara basekete perusisa wabara teko teko yeshisha gaga wabra teko yisese. Father, we say thank you, Jesus, because you are the Lord, bread and God is too good to us. That's where we are here referencing him, for he is the doer of this. Father, we say thank you, Jesus, O oh Lord, in prayer that sees Father, we worship you. Jesus says, Father, we say thank you, O oh God, because it has been you. We reference you. Bread and let's begin to wave our beautiful hands to the Lord because he has answered our prayer because he's the doer of all this. Father, we say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah be to your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty, much less than we have prayed. Please let us put our hands together this evening as we have our seat in his presence. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Finally, I am on the covenant I will apply. Very shortly, we shall be rising up once again to give God quality thanks. And when we do, we shall be thanking him in this direction, saying, Father, thank you for keeping the fire of revival burning in our midst, leading to continuous growth and expansion of this church since inception. Amen. Let me hear your powerful amen to that. Amen. Book of Psalm chapter 127 and verse 1. Except the Lord build the house, the labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wicked but in vain. If you are set to appreciate the name of the Lord once again, online and on site, let's jump on our feet as we begin to thank him, saying, Father, thank you for keeping the fire of revival burning in our midst, O oh Lord, leading to the continuous growth and expansion of this church since inception, O oh Lord. We worship you, we adore you. We lift your name on night. We appreciate you, Abba Father, for keeping the fire of revival burning in our midst, Abba Father, leading to the continuous growth and expansion of this church since inception. This is your doing, and it is so marvelous in our eyes, O oh Lord. We've come tonight to appreciate you for every growth that we've experienced, for the enlightenment of our coast, O oh Lord, for the improvement, O oh Lord, for the continuous growth, O oh Lord, that you've given to us on a regular basis since inception to this very moment father we are here to appreciate your majesty we are here to glorify your holy name thank you precious savior for keeping the fire of revival burning in our midst oh lord leading to the continuous growth and expansion of this church since inception this can only be you and we've come to return all glory to your holy name we come together tonight in one accord as a church to return all glory to you for the continuous growth, O oh Lord, and expansion that we've experienced since inception of this church to this very moment. Father, thank you for your fire revival that is keep burning in this church, O oh Lord. We return all glory to your holy name. We adore your holy name. We lift your name on Abba, Father. We appreciate your majesty. Accept our thanks tonight, Abba, Father. Accept our thanks tonight, Asians of day. In the name of Jesus Christ, you said you will build your church and the gate of hell will not prevail against it. Thank you for honoring that world in this church, Abba Father. Thank you for building this church, O oh Lord. Father, we say we are grateful to you. We appreciate your majesty. We say we are grateful to you, O oh Lord. From the depth of our heart tonight, we return like that one leper to give you all glory, all honor, and adoration. This is our attitude of gratitude. Let it be acceptable by you, O oh Lord. This is our attitude of gratitude. Let it be acceptable by you, O Lord. This is our attitude of gratitude. Let it be acceptable by you, O Lord. Thank you, precious Redeemer, for keeping the fire of revival burning in our midst, O Lord, leading to the continuous growth and expansion of this church since inception. Are you thanking him? Is heaven hearing your voice of appreciation? If you can wave unto him tonight, let's begin to wave unto this great God. If you can clap unto him, let's clap some more unto him. Let's appreciate his majesty. Let's glorify his holy name. Father, we give you all glory. We honor your holy name.
thank you, Abba Father, for doing what only you can do for the expansion, for the growth that we've experienced on every area. We return to say we are grateful to you, Lord. Blessed be unto your holy name forevermore. For in Jesus' most precious name, we have given thanks. Once again, let's put a hand together for Jesus and be seated in his presence. Praise the Lord. I am finally on the covenant highway of life. In this service tonight, it is announcement time. It is announcement time. Welcome to Winners Chapel International, Birmingham. Kindly listen to the following announcement and be blessed. Number one, prophetic focus for the month and books of the month. The prophetic focus for this month is I will restore health unto you. Recommended books of the month are as displayed on screen and are available at the Birmingham Bookshop, at the Voyeur, and through all digital platforms. Number two, membership establishment journey. All our new converts and new members are encouraged to go through our membership establishment journey as displayed on screen for your speedy establishment in the faith and turning you into instant disciples of Christ through the various steps. For any inquiries on this, please see contact details on the screen or watch out for the inquiries table by the voyeur after the service. Number three, share your testimonies. No doubt, God of this commission has visited in diverse ways since the year began. Please be reminded you can share your testimonies during a live service or send them through the phone numbers display on the screen. God shall multiply them in your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Number four, covenant hour of prayer, in person and via Zoom. All this week, from Monday to Friday, by 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., Saturday, 9 a.m., the connection details are as shown on the screen. God bless you as you come or connect. Number five, week of spiritual emphasis. Our week of spiritual emphasis continues tomorrow till Friday, 4th August 2023. We wait on the Lord in fasting and prayers during the day and meet at church in the evening to break our fast with prayers and communion. Time, 6.30 p.m. Number six, Winners Satellite Fellowship holds next Saturday, the 5th August 2023. Our WSF cell meeting holds this Saturday at the various locations. All zona and cell ministers should sensitize our members via WhatsApp text messages for a great time of fellowship with the brethren. Number seven, good news. If you're clapping, make it bigger and stronger for Jesus. Annual Youth Alive Conversion, IAC 2023, now holds from Tuesday 22nd to Sunday 27th, August 2023 at our European headquarters, Winners Chapel International, Dartford. The team is breaking new grounds. All youth should prayerfully get set for encounters of a lifetime. For planning and logistics, all participants should register for this life-changing event at the earliest possible opportunity. Please watch out for the registration details on all I have WhatsApp platforms and the QR code around the church entrance. Number eight, pastoral enlistment. Praise the Lord. In view of the continuous growth, vacancies now exist for pastoral enlistment in this commission. All interested and eligible applicants with proven call into ministry shall be encouraged, admonished, and guided to fill out the application forms online. On or before deadline closes. Closing date is 13th August 2023. Number nine, good news. Word of Faith Bible Institute will be the Birmingham Learning Center announces Wovi Basic Certificate Course, BCC, and Leadership Certificate Course, LCC, for the year 2023. 
which we beheld simultaneously from 7 to 12 August 2023. Wovi is the learning arm of the church that runs one week intensive Bible course from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily. Scholarship is available for all new converts and new members. Please pick up registration forms from the bookshop or submit online by visiting our website. Great facilities are provided for participants with young children. Hallelujah. Number 10, next Sunday at Winners Chapel, Birmingham. Next Sunday, the 6th of August, 2023, shall be a covenant day of restoration service. If you are glad about that good news, come and celebrate Jesus. And also doubles as our prophetic entrance service. Expect an encounter with his word that will change your life forever. First service, 9 a.m. Second service, 11.15 a.m. Remember to come to, to follow up your converts and come expectant and wait a brand new soul for Christ. You are next to be announced to your world in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It is testimonies time. If this sounds like your name, please come to the altar speedily. Toma Kwan Kwene. Hallelujah. If it sounds like your name, please come to the altar to share your testimony as we take this documented testimony. Rescue from untimely death. This one is from Tokumbo A. On September 15, 2019, I started having a dig and I visited hospital. I was treated for malaria, but the headache persisted. The next day, I visited the hospital again and right in the hospital, I went into a coma that lasted for nine days. I was on oxygen for six days. The doctor has written me off. They told my wife I couldn't make it, that she should prepare her mind. But my wife rejected their report immediately. She started praying and administered all the kingdom mystery as taught in church. She connected to pastors in our province and house fellowship who began to intercede. They will come to the hospital on a daily basis to pray for me. We were able to reach Bishop Oyedepo and Bishop Oyedepo declared immediately restoration and he said, I will testify. God took total control and I was discharged from the clinic few days after. Further follow up thereafter confirmed that I have cancer in my sinuses. But my WSF engaged in intensive prayers, reminding God of my kingdom services. Then I was healed totally of the cancer. I thank God for rescuing me from death and healed me fully of cancer. I return all the glory to God of this commission. If you are clapping for Jesus, make it bigger and better. Please come forward to share your testimony, your name, and what God has done. Praise the Lord. My name is Toma. I'm here to testify um, to God as a result of um, a new job. Um, I got an offer for a role I had been expecting in March and I've been work, working in that capacity. Um, what I did, I've been doing more applications to um, for a better role, for that same role, but for just a better opportunity. Um, during the period I had interviewed with a certain organization initially, and I was rejected from that organization. Um, I went back, I reapplied to the organization, the same role, the same people who interviewed me. Um, during the week, I went there, I did the interview. Before I went for the interview after the Sunday service, I met Pastor and he prayed with me, and he said, go and get the job, you will be the preferred person. Um, so I did the interview yesterday. While I was coming to church, on my way to church, I just got a call from them. I'm saying they're willing to offer me the role uh, for a place I interviewed for. But the thing is, you know, I actually interviewed there the same people, the same role, and I was rejected in June. Um, after the service last week, somebody uh, gave her a testimony, said she was rejected five times, and I keyed into that testimony. On Thursday next week, the opportunity came, I got the interview, 
and um, I went for it and I got the offer today and I just want to give God all the praise. Hallelujah! If you know you have not assisted God in your seated position, come on, put your hands together some more for Jesus and give God a shout of hallelujah! Praise the Lord and finally on the covenant highways of life. Very shortly we shall here be rising up to pray and we shall be saying, Father, Thank you for the endless increase of your fairy word from our altar all through the just concluded prophetic season, resulting in the continuous growth of this church. Amen. We anchor it on Acts 6 verse 7. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. If you are set to say this prayer, let's rise up to our feet and begin to pray, saying, Father, we thank you. For the endless increase of your fiery word from our altar, all through the just concluded prophetic season, which has resulted in the continuous growth of this church. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, we lay to her this evening to appreciate you. We lay to her this evening to thank you, to return all the glory unto you for the endless increase of your fiery word from our altar, all through the just concluded prophetic season, which has resulted in the continuous growth of this church. We never had a downtime. We never had famine of your word. Indeed, your word came mightily. Indeed, your word came torrentially. Indeed, your word came in a fiery form. Is not your word like fire? We experience the fire of your word all through the just concluded prophetic season which has resulted lord in the continuous growth of this church for this we have gathered tonight to appreciate you we return all the glory unto you if you know the lord has heard you tonight begin to appreciate him give him a wave offering give him a wave offering father we thank you blessed be your holy name for in jesus mighty name we have prayed let's put our hands together as we have our seats Praise the Lord. I'm finally on the covenant highway of life. And in a short while, we shall yet be rising up to give God thanks. And we shall be saying, Father, thank you for terminating every blindfolding power of the enemy, targeted at preventing multitude from getting saved and established in this church. Second Corinthians 4, 4, he said, In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them, which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Are we said to pray tonight? Rise up on your feet, lift up your voice, and say, Father, thank you for terminating every blindfolding power of the enemy, targeted at preventing multitude from getting saved and established in this church. Father, we say thank you for terminating every blindfolding power of the enemy targeted at preventing multitude from getting saved and established in this church. We say thank you. We say thank you for terminating every blindfolding power, for removing every evil veil, covering their faces, terminating every blindfolding power of the enemy, targeted at preventing multitude from getting saved and established in this church. We say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you for removing every veil that is aimed at, at misrepresenting all your good works in this church. Lord, we say thank you because all evil veils are removed for terminating every blindfolding power. We say thank you. We say thank you. We give you praise for terminating every blindfolding power of the enemy that is targeted at preventing multitude from getting saved and established in this church. We say thank you for enlightening the eyes of their understanding of everyone that you have brought into this, into this place for making them to be saved and established in this church. We say thank you. 
Father, we say thank you. 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 Because for every blindfolding power of the enemy was terminated. Lord, we say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you for terminating every blindfolding power of the enemy from us preventing a multitude from getting saved and established in this church. Lord, we say thank you because every evil veil was destroyed. Lord, we say thank you. We give you praise. We give you praise. Every evil veil that is causing misrepresentation of our doctrine and your good hands in this church. Lord, we say thank you because such evil veils are destroyed. We give you praise. We say thank you. Thank you and thank you, Most High God. Let's wave our hands to him. Let's appreciate him because he has terminated every blindfolding power of the devil that is targeted at preventing multitude from getting saved and established in this church. Father, we say thank you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. To you alone behold the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Please let's put our hands together for Jesus and let's have our seat in God's presence. We're still going to be rising up quickly. And when we do, we're going to be saying, Father, thank you for the fresh breath of the Holy Spirit upon our tracks and flyers, thereby compelling everyone to be in church this coming Sunday. Amen. Number 1131, and there went forth a wind from the Lord and brought quails from the sea and let them fall by the camp. Multitude will gather this Sunday. Without understanding, be upstanding. Let God hear your voice of appreciation. Go before the Lord, begin to pray on those tracks you are going to be using, engaging, anticipating multitude that is going to be following this flower back to this church. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for the free breath of the Holy Ghost, the free breath of the Holy Spirit upon all our tracks and flyers. In the name of Jesus Christ, thereby compelling everyone to be in church this coming Sunday. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Father and my God, we thank you for breathing upon all the material we're going to be engaging this week. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Father and my God, thank you for the free breath of the Holy Spirit upon all our trust and flyers, thereby compelling everyone to be in church this coming Sunday. Everyone that is going to be collecting all our materials, everyone that we're going to be handed over the trust home, Father, Lord, we thank you for they are so candidate to be in church this coming Sunday. Father, we thank you for breathing upon all our materials. In the name of Jesus Christ, as we share them in our workplace, in the high street, in our shopping mall, in all areas, in all across our harvest field, our personal harvest field. Thank you for the multitude that is going to be returning via those strikes in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for breathing upon all our materials and tracks in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Father, thank you. Thereby compelling everyone to be in church this coming Sunday. As many that is going to be collecting that materials from our hand. Thank you, Lord, for bringing them. Thank you, Lord, for drawing them. Thank you, Lord, for converging them. All across our harvest field, from the byways, from the highways, from all this neighborhood, wherever we live in our working place. Thank you for those material pricking the heart of many and drawing them, drawing them to this church this coming Sunday. We exalt you because you are doing it, Lord. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. You can do that also in the Holy Ghost. Come on now. Let balatendia. Our hearts exalt you, O God, for breathing upon all our flyers. And we are taking in anticipation for the multitude those material is going to be bringing this coming Sunday. Because in multitude is the king's honor. Thank you for drawing multitude this coming Sunday. Everyone is gathering. All roll little winners of the Bamiyam. In the name of Jesus, let us If you can see them coming, appreciate him. Come on now, celebrate him. Oh, we give you all the glory, Father. Lord, we honor you. We thank you for the multitude you are bringing this coming Sunday. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. There will be hundred percent return from all the flyer you are sharing this week. Put your hands together for Jesus and please take your seat. Praise the Lord, I'm finally on the covenant highway of life.
we have come to a time of personal supplication where we are going to be going before the Lord to present our heart cry and our heart desires. We have given God thanks for the kingdom and we are here to give him thanks again for everything in our lives. But as we get said to do that, Jeremiah 30 verse 19, I don't know what you are faced with tonight, but remember thanksgiving is the mystery that opens all the doors. Jeremiah 30, 19, he said, Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of them that make merry. And God himself said, I will multiply you. I know you are set for your multiplication tonight in the name of Jesus. He said, I will glorify you, and you shall not be small. But here, verse 21, he said, And nobles shall be of themselves, and governors shall proceed out of them. I see you being enthroned this season in the name of Jesus. I'd like you to take any convenient position. Go before the Lord and look at that situation and give him quality thanks. Jesus stood at the tomb of Lazarus and he said, Father, I thank you because you always hear me. He had 5,000 people to feed and he said, Father, I thank you. And the bread and the fish multiply. Tonight, I want you to look at that situation and give God quality thanks. Give him thanks because he shall turn to you for a testimony. Give him thanks because there is nothing he cannot do. Give him quality thanks tonight and you will be returning with your testimony. Don't be distracted tonight. Make sure you are giving him quality thanks and bring down the awesome presence of God into that situation, into your circumstance because there is nothing he cannot do. He said, is there anything too hard? Is there anything too hard for him? Nothing and nothing is too hard for our God. Why don't you give him God quality thanks? Because of his awesomeness, because of his mighty and majesty. Father, we say thank you.
If I were you, I'll begin to give him thanks in the spirit right now. Why don't you rise upon your feet and give him that thanks? He said, he that give it thanks in the spirit. Do it it well. Give him thanks in the spirit. Everything you thank him for shall turn to you for a testimony. Father, we thank you because this is the confidence. This is the assurance we have. That when we ask according to your will, you hear us. And if you have had us, you have granted our petition. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Thank you for answered prayers. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Put your hands together for Jesus and please be seated. If those hands are for Jesus, you can make it bigger, better, stronger. Hallelujah. Good news. It is offering time. You need an envelope tonight, please signify as the usher had put one in your hands. Hallelujah. Package your tithe, package your offering, and every of your kingdom investment that you have brought to worship the Most High God with tonight. As we welcome the media to project all the giving platform. Hello, everyone. Ways to give are online via our website, text to give, or in service. Give online by visiting the giving page of our website at www.winners-chapel.org.uk Click the online option and follow the on-screen instructions. Before submitting, if you are eligible for gift aid, do not forget to indicate. The details to give by a text for your local church can also be found on our website. If you require further assistance, do not hesitate to contact us via email or telephone. God bless you as you give. Hallelujah. Let's also take an understanding from the word of God. The Bible is speaking in Deuteronomy chapter 8. In verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. The Bible says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get weight. Hallelujah. That he may establish his covenant which is swear unto thy father as it is this day. If you're sad to remember the Most High God in your offering and in your tithe tonight, why don't you rise to your feet with your offering in your hands? I'd like you to raise it up above your head and begin to appreciate God, the giver of seed to the sower and the giver of bread to the heater. Let's appreciate him for the seed he has given unto you tonight. Lord, we give you all the glory. We appreciate you. Blessed be your name forever and ever, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have given thanks. You can lift it up above your head. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. Thank you for what you have given unto us to lay down tonight at your feet. Receive it from our hands and let it come up to you as a sweet-smelling salvo in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, every hand that is lifted up in giving tonight will never go down begging in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Please be seated as we welcome the choir for the administration while you process your seed. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If you're excited to be in God's presence tonight, lift up your hands and your voice and appreciate God for counting you worthy to know a new month, the eighth month of this year, and this first day of our week of spiritual emphasis. I want you to be appreciative to God. Thank Him. Many long to know today they are not privileged. It's not our smartness. It's not our righteousness that has brought us this far. It's because of His mercies and His love towards us. Appreciate Him from the depths of your heart. Father, for counting me worthy to be among the living today and to be alive in your presence. Father, we give you thanks for all you have done for us since the year began. And for what you are said to do for us in this month, we give you praise. We give you glory. We celebrate you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Demons tremble at your presence. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Glory, glory, hallelujah.
tonight, God is here to do great things. One thing God spoke to my heart, all manner of sicknesses, diseases, age-long affliction, nightmares, oppressions, incurable or curable disease, whatever class of disease of affliction or sickness is healing them tonight in the name of Jesus. But I want you to open your mouth to declare your expectation to God tonight. Whatever you want him to do for you tonight, make sure he hears from you. Say, so surely as I live, say the Lord, as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do unto you. You shall have whatsoever you say. Father, tonight, our eyes are on you for your word tonight. Your word of healing, your word of signs and wonders, your word that brings deliverance, your word that brings comfort. Father, your word that transforms, your word that brings restoration. Send it to us powerfully tonight. Let the light of your word break forth, shattering every darkness in the life of any one of us here. Father, let your word bring salvation. Let there be instant healings tonight. Let there be outbreak of creative miracles tonight. Glorify your word in our midst tonight. Move in our midst more than ever before. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. It is done in the name of Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus, everyone, and be seated in God's presence. Happy, happy new month, everyone, in the name of Jesus. This month shall be one of your best months ever in the name of Jesus. Just as God opened up the month for us with testimonies, you heard our brother's testimony. Uh, where it was rejected, it went there again, it was preferred. That shall be your own testimony in the name of Jesus. I don't care where you have been rejected and how many times you have been rejected. This week, between now and Sunday, you will get a letter of offer in the name of Jesus. If you believe that, shout the loudest, amen. Our brother, the keyboardist, testified on Sunday. He got first class in his uh, degree. For everyone in academics here, also, this week, uh, there will be good news for you in the name of Jesus. Tonight, our prophetic focus for this month is, I will restore health unto you. Can we say that with boldness? If God is restoring health to you, can you say it boldly? I will restore health unto you. That word came from the mouth of God in Jeremiah 30, 17. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, said the Lord. I will restore health unto thee. I will heal thee of thy wounds, said the Lord. I want to give good news to somebody tonight. Your head will be restored tonight in the name of Jesus. I don't care the name they call that disease. I don't care the name they have of the disease or sickness they have diagnosed you with. And I don't care how long that sickness has been tormenting you. Tonight, God is restoring her to you in the name of Jesus. You are getting your healing tonight in the name of Jesus. Anyone with fibroids, tonight God is saying he's healing you of that fibroids. Anyone with diabetes, tonight God is saying he's healing you of that diabetes. Anyone with high blood pressure, your medication, God is saying tonight is he's turning your head back to perfection in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is that is affecting your health, tonight is your night of restoration. Your head will be restored back to perfection in the name of Jesus. I want us to know that on the priority list of God is our total health. God wants his people to live in total health. Somebody will agree with me. If you have been sick before, you will know that sickness is not a good thing. Sickness is of the devil. In fact, anything contrary to total health is not God's best. God wants us to be in total health, in sound health. When I mean total health, I mean awareness, vitality. I mean you are healthy spirit, soul, and body. A state of no sickness, a state of no pain, a state of no ache, a state of no disease. 
That is what God wants for you. That's why this month, the anointing and the power to restore health is available. This month, whatever has been battling with your health and your total awareness will be crushed tonight in the name of Jesus. God's perfect way for us is to be in sound health. Sicknesses, diseases, afflictions, oppressions of the devil. Somebody said you can't sleep properly. Bad dreams every time. Oppression in dreams. Nightmares. Panic attacks. You are not confident of yourself again. Tonight, God is setting you free in the name of Jesus. Anything that will not make you to be at ease, to be at peace, to be in wellness, is a direct oppression of the devil. It's a direct oppression of the devil. But good news tonight, God is healing you of all such in the name of Jesus. Our teaching series for our midway services all through this month will be looking at Meet Jesus, the great physician, and his great prescriptions. Can we say that together? Meet Jesus, the great physician, and his great prescriptions. He's the greatest physician. He doesn't need to go to school to study <laughs> medical science. And not only that, he has his own great prescriptions. He can heal you without slicing you up. Uh, I see him walking your life tonight in the name of Jesus. I want us to note the following quickly. Jesus Christ still heals and delivers as in the Bible days. He didn't finish his assignment then. He's still doing it now. In Matthew 4 verse 23, look at what he was doing when he was on earth. And Jesus went about all Galilee. Note that all Galilee, teaching their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. If, he has, if the scripture stopped there, we say, well, maybe healing is not important in the ministry of Jesus. But for his gospel to be complete, he said, he was also healing all manner. How many? All manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. All manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. As he was preaching and teaching, he was also healing. Because the gospel of the kingdom is not complete without healing and deliverance. Tonight, God is touching that area of your life in the name of Jesus. You are getting your healing now in the name of Jesus. Hebrews 13 verse 8. The Bible says, And Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what he was doing when he was physically on earth, he's still doing now. He will still heal. As long as you can believe him, he will heal you. In fact, one of the things that separated Christianity from other kinds of religion, because Christianity is not a religion. They just classify with religion. It's not a religion. It's a kingdom. But what differentiates Christianity is the gospel of Christ that brings healings and deliverance. As you are preaching Jesus, he's still healing people to validate that he's alive. Tonight, he's showing up for you in the name of Jesus. Jesus still goes about healing everyone oppressed of the devil. In fact, I discovered in the ministry of Jesus, he can't stand people falling sick around him. Even sometimes when he was tired, he still heals people. He will always heal and deliver. Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and with power. And what was he doing with that anointing? He went about doing good. He was looking for who to deliver. The Bible says, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So one of the principal applications of the anointing upon Jesus was to heal people, to deliver people from the oppression of the devil. And Jesus is still the same Jesus. He has not changed. Tonight, you are in his house. You are his own person. You are a born again believer. You are getting your healing tonight in the name of Jesus. In Matthew 8, 16, the Bible says, When the heaven was come, even in the evening time, 
they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And what did he do? He cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. He didn't allow anybody to go home with that sickness. As long as they came to him, he healed them. Tonight, you are in his house. You are not going back with that sickness. You are not going back with that infirmity. Tonight, by the authority and the power of the name of Jesus, I decree your instant healing now. If you are standing for somebody, you know somebody that is sick around your family, you can stand for them. Mention their name. Anytime the prophetic word is going out, just be saying amen on their behalf. And I see that happening in the name of Jesus. How does Jesus heal? Jesus still heals today instantly. And also through a process of recovery. There are two methods we saw in the ministry of Jesus when he was healing people. 90% of the healing he did was instant. Jesus will not ask you to come back tomorrow to come and collect your healing. It's instant. Immediately, people are getting their healing. And also, there were process of recovery. There was a, an instance, he laid hands on a blind man in Mark 8, verse 22 to 25. And the man said, he asked, Jesus asked him, how can you see now? He said, I see men walking like trees. <laughs> so the process of recovery began, but he was not yet fully healed. And then in verse 25, he lays hands on him again. Uh, verse 25, he laid hands on him again. And the man said, now I can see every man clearly. That's a process of recovery. But he won't allow anyone to go without their healing. So tonight... You are getting your instant healing in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, shout the loudest amen. amen. One of the things the devil has sold to believers, quickly, that I want to diffuse tonight, I will mention four of them. Number one, the devil has convinced some believers that God sends sickness to people. That God can punish people with sickness. It's not true. Can you, have you punished your own child with sickness? How we go now punish you with sickness? It's a lie from the kingdom of darkness. God does not punish his own people with sickness. He won't do it. He's not a wicked God. So if you are sick in your body, don't let the devil tell you, uh, God is punishing you. In James 5, verse 14, he says, Is there any sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church. He said, Let them pray over him, anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And verse 15, he said, the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has even committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. So your sins should not be the reason why you are not healed. Don't let the devil say that, that lie to you that it's because of your sin that you are sick. God wants to heal you now. He will treat the issue of sin later. But for your health, he needs to settle that first. You need to be alive to live a holy life. I see everyone under the bandage of that lie. You are free tonight in the name of Jesus. Another lie the devil has sold to people, especially believers, is that it's not God's will to heal you now. That your healing is not now. Maybe God is thinking of next month to heal you. If your child is sick, when do you want that child to be healed? I know many of us parents, maybe sometimes our children said have been challenged, you take them to hospital. What are you looking for? Instant healing for that child so that the child can be at rest. If human beings can think like that, how do you think God will postpone your health, your healing? It's when you need it, you get it. In fact, God is more than in a hurry to get you healed. Another lie the devil has sold to people, especially believers, is that anybody can fall sick at any time. Don't join them to be saying that. Say so anybody can fall sick, including me. Once you include yourself, then the devil, <laughs> devil also include you among the people you'll be selling sickness to. Anybody can not fall. If you're a believer, your body is the temple of, of Christ. Your body is not meant to be carrying sickness. That body belongs to Christ. And Christ's body is not meant for sickness. So don't accept that lie from the enemy. Don't join them to say it. Say so anybody can fall sick. Anybody can die at any time. Say minus me. Can you say that with a loud voice? So you are not among the people that can fall sick anyhow. I remember during the lockdown period, some people say, ah, 
Anybody can just contact COVID. I told them minus me and minus my household. There was one of her sister in London in her place of work. He said they, were, they kept testing her because everybody else contacted COVID. She was the only one that she didn't contact. She kept telling, I cannot have it. <laughs> she said she was taking her communion every day. She goes to work. Everybody was contacting it. She didn't. Why? Don't allow the devil to say that lie to you. You are not meant to fall sick. It's not, it's not the thing in the atmosphere that is causing sickness. It's the devil that is selling it. Don't accept his product. And then the final lie the devil has sold to some people because of how they grew up. They told them you are born with the sickness. There is nothing you can do about it. You are SS. There is nothing you can do about it. You are born with uh, uh, asthma. There is nothing you can do about it. Everybody in your family has diabetes. There is nothing you can do. About it. It's a lie of the devil. The day you gave your life to Jesus, you have changed family. You have changed personality. You are a different person. If any man be in Christ, what happens to him? He's a new creature. So tell the devil, the day you gave your life to Christ, sickness, you've released it to him. You've given it back to him. What we have in this kingdom is total health. And I see you enjoying that in the name of Jesus. Tonight, let's get some few points to help our understanding. We are looking at part one of me, Jesus, the great physician and his great prescriptions. Number one, you must recognize Jesus as the great physician. Recognize Jesus as the great physician. Not the great physician alone, your great physician. I know some people, they are so confident of their GPs. They say, my GP told me this. My consultant told me this. Those are hardly GP. They don't know anything. Sorry for their, I'm not bringing down medical science. There are so many things medical science have not discovered. <laughs> if something is pressing you down your dream, can medical science help, help you on that? <laughs> if you see masquerade pursuing you in the dream, can med medical science help you on that one? Uh, we did detect that with uh, uh, the scanning machine. They won't see anything. So they are very limited. Thank God for their lives. God is using them mightily. But Jesus should be your personal physician. See him as your personal physician. And seeing Jesus as your personal physician means he can handle everything about your health. In Matthew 8, 17, the Bible said that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. He himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. Only the physician, Jesus, can do that. He took our infirmities. He, he collected it from our hands and destroyed the infirmities and bear our own sicknesses. In 1 Peter 2, 24, let's see how he destroyed sicknesses. He said, who is his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree? That we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness. By whose stripes, what happened? You were healed. He paid the price for your healing when they were beating him on, before the cross, before he climbed the cross. All those beatings he received, it was for your healing. Because something must be paid for your health. So he paid the price. So God is not thinking of healing you, he has healed you. Jesus paid the price. Do you know something about price? When you pay the price for something, or somebody paid the price for you. For example, if somebody paid the price for a car for you, and they show you the garage where the car is, when you get there, what do you do? You just take the receipt of payment that the person has given to you. You say, that's my car. Can you give me the key? You, you don't need to greet them. You don't need to be cautious. Because you paid. Uh, if you have not paid, then you, you, you need to follow the process. But if something has been paid for, all you need to do is to claim your right. Your healing has been paid for. There's an account for your healing. Jesus has furnished that account for you. All you need to do when you are challenging your head, go to that account and draw from it. Tonight, every healing you need, you are getting it in the name of Jesus. Number two thing you need to know is the only known all-round specialist that can heal and deliver 
from every form of sickness and disease. Jesus is the only known specialist that can deliver <laughs> and heal from every form of sickness and disease. In Luke 6, 17 to 19, and he came down with them and stood in the plain and the, and the company of his disciples. And a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits, they were healed. So he was healing people of all manner of sicknesses and diseases. Even people with mental health issues, he healed them. I see you getting your healing tonight in the name of Jesus. The prescription of this great physician, Jesus, covers all issues of life, including our health and wholeness. In John 10, verse 10, the Bible says, even Jesus was the one that said it. He said, the thief cometh not for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He said, but I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. That is God's heartbeat for us. He wants us to enjoy life. Can somebody be claiming to enjoy life when they are sick? Every time I go to the hospital, my heart beats because if God opens your eyes to see the spirit tormenting people, doctors are just wasting. <laughs> they are just trying their best. If God opens your eyes, to the, you see, they are, they are trying to treat the symptoms. But what is causing it? They can't, do, they can't deal with it. It's only Jesus that has the power to deal with it. All through the healing ministry of Jesus, did you see him mention bacteria or virus? No. <laughs> he never mentioned bacteria, fungus, or virus, or anything, or COVID. He never mentioned them. He was dealing with the devil using them. Because once you deal with the spirit behind the sickness, the sickness disappears. I see it working for us in the name of Jesus. Now, tonight we are going to look at one prescription. And that's the platform for all healings. If you don't have it, you can't get healing from this physician. And that is the healing wonders in faith. Our faith. Our faith. All through the ministry of Jesus, he never healed anyone without their faith. Have you noticed that? If you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John very well, you discover that everyone that he healed, he healed them on the basis of their faith in him. You don't have faith, then you are not qualified for healing. Healing is the covenant right of every child of God, but it's only accessible by faith. 1 John 5 verse 4, For whatsoever is born of God, overcometh the world. He said, this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Your faith, that's why I was saying on Sunday, if you don't build your faith, you may not be able to enjoy the best of God. Faith does not jump on people. You build it. Romans 10, 17, faith comment by hearing and hearing the word of God. In Matthew 9, verse 29, Jesus was speaking to the blind man. If you start from verse 28, Matthew 9, from verse 28, and when he was coming to the house, the blind man came to him, and Jesus said unto them, believe ye that I'm able to do this. Let's settle the question of your faith first. They said to him, Yeah, Lord, it's okay. According to your faith, be it unto you. He touched their eyes. I've done, done my part, but your faith is what we give it to you. That's what he's saying. So our faith is crucial for our healing. If you believe tonight, you are already healed. You are going home healed. If you believe tonight that that part, they said you are SS, that that blood it will change to AA tonight. That is it. You have it already. Do you know how fast faith is? It's as fast as switching off your light. You know, if you press the switch to the light of this place, how, does it, how long does it take for the light to come on? Instantly. That's how, how fast your faith is. When you plug it to the power of God, <laughs> you get your instant healing. We saw the woman with the issue of blood demonstrate that. As soon as she touched the hem of Jesus' garment with her faith, the Bible said the issue of blood stanched immediately. In Luke chapter 8, verse 40 to 48. And then Jesus looked around and said, well, somebody has tapped into the power. <laughs> power went out. So, 
Your faith is very important. Jesus went to his hometown, Nazareth, where he grew up. In Matthew 6, from verse 5 to 7. He got there with all the anointing. The Bible says he could dare do no mighty thing. Mark 6, please. Mark 6, verses 5 to 7. He could dare do no mighty works. Why? Because of their unbelief. Except he lay hands on a few sick folk and heal them. And verse 6, he marveled because of their unbelief. The power of God, he was carrying the full power of God. But unbelief shut out that power. They insulated the power from working. Why? Because of unbelief. Your faith is crucial to your healing. No matter who is laying hands on you. No matter who is praying for you. If you don't have faith, you can't be healed. The power of God needs your faith to work for your healing. This is why no one can tap into the healing virtue without faith. Faith is not just believing God, but obeying God to prove that you believe him. So that God can commit himself to make good his promises. If you truly believe God for your healing, you will take actions. In John 9 verses 1 to 8, there was a man there born blind. His own case was critical. The Bible scholars made us to understand that he didn't even have eye socket. This, the whole eyes was flat. No eyeball, nothing. It, that's the way he was born. No eye space. Everything was just flat. But Jesus saw him. And look at what Jesus told him. Go and watch. In verse 7. John 9 verse 7. And he said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam. A man that is born blind. <laughs> Jesus gave him instruction. And the man, because of his faith, he believed. If it's in a day, somebody will be asking, how will I get to that Siloam? Where is Siloam? <laughs> Won't you book Uber for me to go? <laughs> this also was not concerned. He just gave him instruction. Go wash in the pool of Siloam. That is it. And the man went his way, therefore, and washed. And when he did that, what happened? He came back saying, I popped out. Simple obedience to prove his faith. He didn't pray. He only obeyed. Many of us are praying, but we don't have faith. It's not your prayer that connotes faith. It's your action that proves your faith. What has God told you? What are you doing? If he says you are healed, then jump up. You are healed. Don't be going around and say, well, you know, Pastor, I'm still, I still have that my diabetes. You are the, <laughs> that means you don't believe Jesus has taken away. It's your own property. When I see people personalize sickness, you are not calling for healing. There is no way the healing power of God will work. That will not be you in the name of Jesus. Also, faith is domiciled in the heart. Your faith must be heart rooted. It must come from your heart. There is head faith. There is heart faith. Head faith will not work. Heart faith is what works. What do we mean by heart faith? Your spirit man agrees with your mind on the word of God. You believe, I mean, when, once your mind is on something, it's in agreement with it. Your spirit has received the word of God, but your mind also agrees with what your spirit believes. That is what we call heart faith. When it's on your head, you only agree, but your, your mind is not agreeing. Your mind says, well, what pastor is saying is correct. Uh, <laughs> We know people can be healed. Uh, but when they come to your own case, you are not sure whether you can be healed. That's it, faith. But when it's hard faith, you say, that is me, God is talking about. I agree with what God has said. Then you take action based on that agreement. Not only that, the hard faith needs to be spoken out. Because I've had people say, well, I believe in my heart. What you believe in your heart, nobody knows it. It's when you declare it. And then you take action on it. That's when God is also convinced that you believe. Every faith that would deliver comes from the heart. It must be spoken out and it must be acted upon. What you are saying must agree with what is in your heart and what you are doing. That is what makes a complete faith that delivers results. When you declare the word of God, how do you declare it? You say it boldly. You say it boldly. I can never be sick. I don't have asthma. 
I don't have fibroids. It's gone forever. I don't have excess. I can never have it again. I am not barren. I'll be fruitful mother of children. That is declared. You say it before people. Not that you are saying it gently and then you are wondering what will people feel about you. When it comes to the issue of faith, <laughs> you stand with God alone, not opinions of men. You stand on what God has said and you declare it openly. Can you imagine Abraham? We'll be rounding up now. Abraham changed his name when he, he never had a child. God told him, change your name from Abraham to Abraham. From father to father of nations. He changed his wife's name as well. And they were close to, nearly, he was nearly 100 at that time, without his child. That's boldness. In Romans 4, 17 to 21, the Bible says, he staggered not at the promise of God. He was strong in faith, giving glory. He never considered his wife's, <laughs> his age or his wife's womb. The woman has passed menopause. He stood on the word of God. No wonder he is the father of faith today. I see your faith working for you in the mighty name of Jesus. So it's not just speaking the word of God. You speak it boldly. As 14 verse 3 says, Long time therefore about day, speaking boldly. So the, the speaking we are talking about, you say boldly. I'm already healed. I can't be oppressed of the devil. Devil, take your hands of my health. That is both speaking. I see you working for somebody in the name of Jesus. In a moment, let's bow down our heads. We're going to pray. But before we pray, in our, in our prayer mode right now, if you are here, you have not given your life to Jesus. You are the one hindering yourself. Because God does not hear sinners. The first thing God can hear from sinners is the prayer of salvation. You're here tonight, you want to surrender your life to Jesus. That's where it starts from. You can't be claiming healing, health, and wholeness in this kingdom when you are not a member. If you want to surrender your life to Jesus, I want to, you to raise your right hand up in your seated position. Just raise that right hand up. I want to pray for you. God is touching your heart. You need to do it properly. You know, you can't deceive God. You can deceive men, but you can't deceive God. If your name is not registered in heaven, no matter who is praying for you, it won't work. God bless you, my brother. Whoever is, is raising up their hand, raise it properly. I want to pray for you. You want to properly surrender your life to Jesus. Just pray after me right now. Everyone raising up their hands, just pray after me. Or you are here, you are bastarded. You know in your heart. You need to rededicate your heart back to Jesus. Also raise up your hand. I want to pray for you. Everyone raising up their hand, raise it properly. Uh, and pray this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I've come to you tonight. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of all my sins and cleanse me by your blood. Write my name in your book of life. Today, wipe away my evil past and grant me a new beginning. Make me a member of God's family. Thank you, Jesus, for coming to my heart to dwell there. Thank you for giving me that peace and that joy of salvation. From today, I vow to serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. For everyone that prayed that prayer, I cover you with the blood of Jesus. You won't go back to the world. You will serve Jesus. You will fulfill your glorious destiny. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Let's rise to our feet and bring out our communion material. This communion tonight is for total healing, health, and wholeness. As you take the body and the blood of Jesus tonight, whatever is the name of that sickness, and no matter how long that sickness is there, it's going to be destroyed and flushed out completely tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, lift up the communion material. We declare this communion blessed as the body and the blood of Jesus. As we take it tonight, instant healings, instant deliverances. For every one of us, Father, let our health be restored. Jesus enjoys supernatural health. That is the kind of faith every one of us is taking tonight. Father, via this communion, let our strength be renewed. Let our natural strength be exchanged for your supernatural strength. Via this communion as well, every form of negative addition, addition to negative habits, smoking, masturbation, all manner of addiction that are unclean, that is making us unclean, 
via this communion, we are delivered from them in the name of Jesus. Every form of oppression hence via this communion. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Let's take the communion as the choir lead us in praise. The blood of Jesus set me free from sin and sorrow. The blood of Jesus sets me free. Oh, the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus sets me free from sin and sorrow. The blood of Jesus sets me free. Oh, please. we take the announcement we are, going to, we are going to practicalize what we have had if you are sick in your body or you feel that pain in your body we've taken the communion but i want you to make a bold declaration concerning your healing health and wholeness whatever you have been feeling before you now address it and say tonight you are gone forever headache you are gone forever diabetes you are gone forever nightmares and oppressions in the dream you are gone forever Begin to speak to yourself right now, or you are standing in God for somebody. High blood pressure tonight is your expiry date. You are gone from my body forever. Uh, kidney failure, you are gone forever. Cancer, you are gone forever. Fibroid, tonight the hand of God is removing you forever. You will not be part of my system again. That migraine is gone forever. That menstrual pain is gone forever. That hormonal imbalance is gone forever. Autism is gone forever. Speech impediment is gone forever. Hearing challenge is gone forever. Bloody eyesight, long sightedness, short sightedness. Tonight you are gone forever. Jesus has healed me. I'm free indeed. My head is restored. In the name of Jesus. No more insomnia. Sleeplessness is gone forever. In the name of Jesus. Every part of my system is functioning properly. All my internal organs, they are functioning properly. Jesus has restored my health. Tonight my health is fully restored. No more challenge with my health. In the name of Jesus. That dementia symptoms is gone forever. Loss of memory. Depression is gone forever. In the name of Jesus. It is done. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. If you know you are free forever, shout the loudest, amen. Put your hands together for Jesus and be seated. So from tonight, don't address yourself as having that sickness. You don't have it. Uh, don't say, uh, you know me, <laughs> I used to have this. No, you don't have it again. You have free personality right now. Jesus has healed you. And your healing will be sustained forever in the name of Jesus. Let's take these three announcements quickly as we close. Good, good news. Uh, pastoral enlistment is ongoing. Please, as Ali announced. And then other vacancies there. Go to the website and apply if you're interested in all those uh, positions. If you want to apply for a missionary pastor position, please, you can see me personally for further information and clarifications on that. But the closing date is 13th of August. Make sure you respond on time. Don't let the call of God upon your life be entering voicemail. God will help us in the name of Jesus. Also, good, good news. Our Word of Faith Bible Institute, the basic certificate course, and the leadership certificate course comes up next week from 7th to 12th of August. If you are yet to take your form immediately after this service, Go to the bookshop or the front desk and pick the form. We still have more spaces for a lot of people to be part of it. And I see you being blessed in the name of Jesus. And another good news again. 
Our week of spiritual emphasis continues tomorrow and it concludes on Friday. We are waiting on the Lord in fasting with prayers and God will be showing up for us in the name of Jesus. The remaining days of this month, if you know anybody that is sick around you, around your family, you can bring them personally to church. Let them attend any of the services. The anointing to heal and deliver is present this month. Uh, so all manner of cases will be healed by God. And I see the, those testimonies coming forth in the name of Jesus. This coming Sunday shall be our covenant day of restoration and doubles as our prophetic entrance service. Let's keep following up all the converts God has given to us in the course of the midst of the year season and since the year began. As we do this, your reward will answer for you in the mighty name of Jesus. And finally, our leadership empowerment summit we hold on Saturday. Uh, all leaders in the house, the time is 7 a.m. UK time. Pastors, elders, deacons, deaconesses, uh, unit executives, WSF ministers and operators, uh, we are all expected to be in attendance. God's servant, the apostle by this commission, shall be ministering to us in a great way. And I see every one of us being blessed in Jesus' name. Let's rise to our feet tonight. Let's just appreciate God for what he has done tonight. Healings have taken place tonight. Health has been restored tonight. Deliverances have taken place tonight. Father, we give you thanks, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. As you go tonight, go in peace. Return with your testimonies. As the Lord leave it, you are returning to service tomorrow with your own testimonies. And for many that are believing God for miracle job, because God has been proving it over and over again to us. Maybe you have been rejected before. Between now and Sunday morning, they will call you back in the name of Jesus. You are returning with multiple offers. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's share the goodness right now. Surely, God's goodness and message shall follow us all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. And finally, on the covenant highways of life. Congratulations. Amen and amen. You know Jesus, the physician has healed you tonight. One to two or three people go and tell them, Jesus has healed me. I'm no longer sick. I'm free from every sickness or disease. I'm in total health. God bless you. See you tomorrow with your testimonies.